Today is part seven in the Overcoming series and uh, how to outlast tough times. Today we're going to preach about something that nobody wants to talk about. It's a serious subject, but everybody dodges it. Well, I just believe God's like a D9 dozer. He just runs through it and lets people, he throws out the seed. Where the seed falls, either you'll take it and start living in it, or that seed will die by the wayside. Today we're going to be talking about taming the tongue in tough times. Taming the tongue in tough times. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, you got a pastor in front of you, I'm not perfect. A lot of people look at me and they say, well, I just want to be like Brother Brian. No, you don't. You want to be like Jesus. I, I'm an imperfect man. I make a lot of mistakes throughout my career and throughout, throughout my life. And I wish I could stand in front of you today and say I've never gossiped. But guess what? I have. I wish I could honest to God stand in front of you and say, man, listen to me. The church never gets on my nerves. But y'all do. And I know, watch it here. I know y'all are like, man, you're getting my nerves too. I know. I understand that. But that's why I'm talking to you today from my heart. And that's why I'm going to lay out my heart right here on this floor today and say, guys, this is where we're at. This is what we got to deal with. And I'm telling you, the smallest member of your body is the tongue, but it kindles the largest fire. And I'm telling you, if we're going to go from here to here, if you're going to go from here to here in your marriage, if you're going to raise your children, you can't stay here. you got to get here. How do you do that? You tame your tongue. You tame your tongue. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Have you ever noticed that uh, God designed your head with seven openings? You have two nostrils. You have two eyes. You have two ears and one mouth. Has anyone ever wondered why? You have two of everything but a mouth. I don't. I know exactly why God gave Brian Rafferty <laughs> one mouth. And I don't laugh, y'all too. I know exactly why God <laughs> gave you one mouth. Everybody, has anybody ever wished that you had two mouths? No, my goodness, no, no, no. Nobody needs two mouths. That's one opening. Watch me, your mouth is the one opening, the mouth gate that does more damage than all the other six openings on your body. The Bible says that your tongue will kindle a fire. Notice the Bible says in Psalms 34, you don't turn, I want you guys to turn to Judges chapter 12. I'm going to read you some scripture, set the foundation, and then I'm going to preach this for a moment, okay? Y'all pray for me. Psalms chapter 34, verse 11 through 13 says, Come, my children, listen to me. He said, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The fear, not that God's going to send a big lightning bolt out of heaven and strike you upside the head, but it's a reverent fear that God is God. He's number one. I'm right behind him, but he's number one. He gets all everything. He's number one. Whoever of you, listen to this, loves life. How many of y'all love living? Boy, I love life. Uh, if your hand's not up, maybe you're getting ready to get a sermon that you're not going to like, but you'll like it eventually. Whoever loves life. And desires to see many good days. I want to grow to be a good old man. I want to grow a good old age. He says these words. If you like life, if you love life, and you desire to see many good days, watch what he says. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. He said, if you want a good life, you want to live long, he says, watch what you say. Watch what you speak. Now listen to me. You, got, you might need to wear some steel toe boots today and uh, next Sunday. Because it's going to get hot in here. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 says pretty much the same thing. New Testament, whoever lo would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23 says, He who guards his mouth and his tongue, watch this, keeps himself from calamity. In other words, from evil. From evil. How many of you know there's just some people that's got diarrhea of the mouth? I know you say, Brian, you're a pastor, and you shouldn't say that. No, I'm going to shoot you straight. There are some people that just love to gossip. Watch this. Y'all ready? Everybody say, I'm ready, preacher. Run! Get away from them! They're troublemakers! They're troublemakers? Don't y'all throw nothing. Y'all all right? Y'all good? Somebody say amen. It's the truth. How many of y'all want truth? 
Or would you rather have a sissy pastor who's going to stand up here and give you a fluff gospel and nothing changed in your life? You walk out the same way you walked in and nothing ever changed in your life. I want a word of God that will get in my spirit, start stirring me up, and make me change my life to give him glory. That's what I need. All right, I'll make sure y'all are still alive. If y'all can't handle this beginning, I don't know what's going to happen. It says in Proverbs 15, 4, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes, it hinders the spirit. Proverbs 18, 21, like, watch this. The tongue has the power of life and of death. In other words, that smallest little member in your mouth, inside your head, it either brings life or it brings death. It brings life or it brings death. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. For out of the overflow of the heart, listen to this, Brendan. From out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. See, when, you go, when, when you're sick and you don't feel good, you go to the doctor, right? You, you go into the doctor's office and they'll sit down and, and you'll tell them how you feel. And after you tell them how you feel, what's wrong, what, you, what you're going through, the first thing the doctor says is stick out your tongue. His, he or she would say, stick out your tongue. Because here's what the doctor knows. The doctor, he, they listen to you, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. They pay more attention to your tongue than they do what come out of your mouth. Because here's what, what we know as, as physicians, what they know as physicians, and everybody knows. The tongue will tell the truth. The tongue, if you're sick, it will lead to whatever's going on in your body, it will lead to that. They'll say, huh, there's something going on by looking at your tongue. Now, I started thinking about the spiritual aspect of that, and here's what I, th here's what I thought about God. How many times does God show up and say, hey, how you doing today? How you doing today? And the first thing Christians say, oh, I'm good. Nothing's wrong, God. I'm fine. Everything's good. My children are angels. My work situation's good. Church is a blessing. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you'll say, praise God. I'm doing good. And God say, stick out your tongue. Because see, what I know about God, God looks at your tongue. He starts examining your life. He says, oh, how are you speaking at home? How are you speaking at work? How are you speaking at school, youth group? How are you speaking in your relationships? How are you speaking in your marriage? How are you speaking at church? And I'm telling you, God will diagnose you by looking at your tongue, by your spiritual life, and what you speak. You want to see a dead church? You let everybody start speaking death. You want to see a dead marriage? You let that marriage start speaking death. You want to see death? It's called in your tongue. All through the Bible, check me out, Sheila. God says these words. He says, you want to see death? He always relates it to the tongue. Always. What we need, guys, listen to me. If we're going to go to this next level, when Dr. Jesus looks at us, he needs to start saying, you know what? Even though I don't feel good, even though I'm upset, and even though I'm angry and my circumstances don't look right, that's not what God said. God said, I am blessed. I hope you all get this word. I hope y'all just didn't show up for church and say, man, I'm here today, Brother Brian. Put a check mark beside my name. Because I'm telling you, as a pastor, the number one thing I hear all the time is complaint. Very seldom, very, very, I've been doing this 17 years, Scott, and I can count on one hand where people come up to me and say, "Woo, I am blessed and highly favored. My cup runneth over. I'm all I, I don't hear that much. They come and go, oh, oh, God. Man, if I was the devil, I would eat you for lunch every day. I would mess with you because you're the type of person, watch me, you're, you're at a critical point in your life. Either you're going to speak life or you're going to speak death. What if I went up to Dana? <laughs> I learned something, gang. Let me give you some clues before you get mad. When your wife comes out of the closet with two shoes on, one on the right and one on the left, and she says, honey, which one do you like the best? Let me give y'all a big clue. You like both of them. Both of them look good on your little, little Mac mama. You know what I'm saying? Both of them look nice. Don't sit there and go, well, I like that. Here's the deal. Number one, you spoke death. Number two, she's going to wear the opposite of what you said anyhow. 
She'd go, so just say, honey, no matter which one you wear, you look good. That's five dollars. Somebody owe me five dollars after this over. What, I, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that God says, listen to me, I know how your spiritual condition is by examining your tongue. I know how your walk is with me by examining your tongue. How you talk, how you act, what you speak, what you say. Watch this. How many of y'all like hanging around negative people? Not one of you out of over, we had over 600 and some people. Not one, both services. I was like, so why do we do that? Because here, let me tell you something. It's the devil's language. The devil can relate to his language. And when you speak death over somebody, over their situation, over their circumstance, I promise you the devil can relate to that. Can I just preach this for a moment? If we as God's people will let this word just get deep down in our hearts, just let it get deep down into our spirits, if the church could ever get this word, could you imagine what would happen today, right now, if everyone here this morning would just start speaking life and love and blessings over each other? Can you imagine if somebody even didn't, even didn't even look right? The worst thing I hate, here's what I hate. When I go up to people and here's what they do. They go, you don't look good today. Dude, you got black under your eyes. Are you okay, Robbie? Are you running a fever, Robbie? My God, you need to go to the doctor, Robbie. You're all right. Your, your left ear is sagging more than your right. I'm being honest with you. Why not? Even if they're like that, go up to them and say, man, God, I'm praying for you. I know you're going through some hard times, but God said he can heal you. He can bless you. He can restore you. He'll lift you up out of the miry clay and set you on a solid foundation. We need life givers. Amen. We don't need death givers. Listen, if we're going to the next level, which we are, this will get very uncomfortable. Watch me. If we're going to the next level, which we are, we got to be a life given church. Even if you wouldn't do it your way, watch, the, watch me. I tell you this all the time. Burger King lied. Burger King said, you can have it your way. Lie, 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 lie. A church is not like that. I've learned as a pastor to be humble. I've learned to listen. I've learned to follow the leadership of God. I've learned to get wise counsel around me and not be like the long ranger all the time. You've got to take heed to the counsel of God. See, the number one cancer in churches today is loose lips. Well, I, I bet we're going to find out what y'all made of next week. Loose lips, gossip, and talking about things that you don't even know anything about. Loose lips. The Bible says, and I want y'all to listen to this, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I tell you that men and women will have to give an account on that day of judgment for every careless and idle word that they have spoken. Listen to me. I didn't write this. It is in red. When we die, you will stand before the Lord one day. Whether you like it or whether you don't. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. I'm praying today that we get it right here before we get up there. We can turn this stuff around. You know why Pentecost worked, Jimmy? They loved each other. They were in one room, one place, one accord. They thought alike. It wasn't about me, him, or her. It was all about Jesus. And when we as God's people learn to decrease as God increases, if we learn to die and pick up the cross daily and follow him, things will start shifting. Things will start changing in your life. Somebody praise him. Now, I'm going to read you some scripture that mess with me. That mess with me, but it's Judges chapter 12, verse 5 and 6. Six. See, a lot of people talk themselves sick. Listen to me very carefully. This is a good, rich word. You ain't got to hoop and holler to have a good word straight from the Lord. A lot of people talk themselves depressed. A lot of people talk themselves angry. How many of y'all have ever done this before? Before you even get out of bed, you done made yourself mad. Come on. Before you even turned over in the bed, put your feet on the ground, all of a sudden you realize that anger 
is rising up in you. You're mad at your past. You're mad at your ex. You're mad at everything in your life because why? Listen to me. You've not dealt with anger. You've got a spirit in you called anger. This is the truth. But it's the good truth. It's the right truth. I have every reason, according to the world, to be mad. I've got every reason in the world, according to this old world, to have hatred in my life. But something happened to me. When I got born again, everything just didn't automatically change. It took a process. It took me getting in his presence every single day. Watch me, I'm going to help you. If all you do is come to church on Sunday, but you drop him on Monday, you'll never cross over the Jordan. If all you do is come to church on Sunday, I'm not fussing at you, because guess what? I used to be you. And I became a miserable man. I became so miserable, I was driving my wife crazy. Driving my father-in-law crazy. I called Bob, and I said, Bobby, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Bob was like, I don't know what case to love Jesus. I'm like, I do love Jesus, Bobby. He said, okay, go to, go to Walmart and hand out cards. And I'm like, that's mean, Bobby. You know, I just, I didn't understand. But I kept fighting for the Lord. I kept standing in the presence of God. I kept coming no matter if I wanted to come or not. Because I knew something was about God. And I remember when I went to college, I told the Lord, I said, God, if this is all you got, I've got you. You mean to tell me I just get saved and that's it? And I, the, the most dangerous prayer I've ever prayed, Billy, in my life was I said, God, show me what you're like. And today, I'm going to tell you today, and I'm going to testify to you, if you're just mediocrity and you're sitting back, and you're sitting in a blue chair, and nothing's happening in your life, pray this prayer. God, show me what you're like. But you've got to be faithful in the showing. You can't say, God, show me what you like, go to a bar. You can't say, God, show me what you're like, and keep living a life like you're living. Something's got to change. Something's got to touch you. And I'm telling you, when the Lord touched my soul, when he truly, truly came into my life, I'm telling you everything, everything changed in my life. Here's what's crazy. I don't even know some of you, but I love you. Here's what's crazy. When you fall in love with God, you start loving what he loves, and that's people. When you fall in love with God, things start changing. You start talking like him and acting like him and walking like him. You can't do and you can't go where you once went. Amen. Can anybody testify that something happened to you? You're not what you used to be. And God is good in you. And God's still doing a good work in you. Amen. So listen to this. Judges chapter 12. Verse 5 and 6. It says, the, the Gittalites captured the fords of the Jordan. Notice they were at the Jordan. Jordan leading to Ephraim. And whenever a survivor of Ephraim asked him, are you an Ephraimite? If he, if he replied no, they, they said these words. All right, say Shabbat. Shabbat. And he said, Saboas. Saboas. You say, Brian, that's weird. Listen to me. There is one letter separating these two words. One is the H, and then there's an I. Shabbat means these words. It means i got to give you praise. Saboas means it's too hard. I can't do it. So there's one letter. When you start looking at the H in Shabbat, it means... God, I'm looking to you. And Saboas means, God, I'm not looking to you. Now watch, let's go on. This, this makes a little bit more, better sense, hopefully. Because they could not, listen to this, because they could not pronounce the word correctly, they seized him and killed him, listen to this, and killed him at the fords of the Jordan. Look how many people died that day. 42,000 Ephraimites were killed at this time. You say, Brian, that's mean. Brian, I don't, under, I don't understand that. See, the Ephraimites were standing, listen to me, at the Jordan. Every time you read Jordan in the Bible, it means decision time, transitioning time. So listen, a lot of you right now in your marriage, 
A lot of you right now at church, a lot of you wherever you're at, you're standing at the Jordan and it's time to transition. Watch me, very important you get this. The Ephraimites had to make a decision. Either they were going to cross over the Jordan or remain as they were. I guarantee you if I was a betting man, a lot of you right now are still angry over something that happened to you 20 years ago. If I was a betting man, I bet you there's a, the majority of the church right now is hurting but refusing to move. A lot of people have something going on in their life. They're standing at the Jordan. They know something's going on in their life. They can see the promised land, but they know something's going on. So instead of saying the right word, they refuse to go forward and cross over the Jordan so they remain as they are. So many people today, and I know, I know God's speaking now. Some of y'all are squirming. Here's the deal. Some of you right now is at the Jordan. Some of you right now is at a decision time in your life. Some of you right now are so angry because of what somebody did to you so long ago. You're still standing at the Jordan. Oh, you're a good person. You're born again. You're saved. You love God. You can see the promised land. But you're standing at the Jordan, refusing to go forward because why? One thing, gentlemen. They refused to give God the praise. They were at the Jordan. They was afraid to go over, so instead of going over, they remained as they are. Can I preach this for two more minutes? Listen to me. So many churches are remaining as they are because they, they're saying the wrong language. They're not speaking God language. They're doing man language. So many churches today are not going forward because of this one thing. They're at the Jordan they know who they are. They know what's going on, but they refuse to go forward. They want to remain as they are. Right now, right now, as we speak right now, there are 48,000 Southern Baptist churches. Out of the 48,000 Southern Baptist churches, over 39,000 reported no baptism. Out of the 48,000 Southern Baptist churches, watch this, the average attendance is 52. And we say that we've got God Almighty in us. The problem with the churches is this. They're standing at the Jordan. They know what's wrong. They know where they've been. They know what they've done. And they know who they're with. But they refuse to make a transition because they're comfortable where they are. Does that resonate with anybody? So many people today are comfortable where they are. That's why churches don't move. Watch this. Because see, if the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah, I said hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost shows up, flesh cannot stand. And when the Holy Spirit starts showing up, things start shifting and things start happening above and beyond your mind, which your mind can comprehend. And so many churches are afraid to move over the Jordan because of the transition of the Holy Spirit. And today, we got a choice, we got a decision to make. So many people are speaking the devil language. Christians need to speak the right language. Hallelujah. Speak, we need to get to that Jordan, that transition time in our life, and speak God's language. You say, Brian, what is, what is God's language? I'll tell you what it is. At the, even today, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a choice. I had a decision. Was I going to worship God? How easy would it have been for me to lay in bed and call Haywood or call Daniel and say, you know what, man? Tag, you're it today. I don't feel good. And I understand we all go through sicknesses. But I'm saying sometimes to get over the Jordan, to get over your problem, you just got to stand up and praise him whether you want to or not. Yeah. And when the old devil comes at you like a roaring lion and a flood, God says, I'll raise a standard up in your name. God says, no matter if you're with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I, I promise you I'll be the fourth person walking with you in that fire. And even when the old devil tries to stop up your well, I need to stop and pray. The old devil's trying to kill me right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, this is real. And Father God, I submit to your authority. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, you just fill this house with your worship. 
God, I die to myself. I die to the way I think. I die to Lord to the way I, I think things should run. Oh, Holy Spirit, I invite you in. Oh, take over my mouth. Take over my body. Take over me from the top of my head to the bottom of the soles of my feet, God. Lord, may I be a testimony of God today. May I be a testimony, God, of your goodness, Lord. Even when you don't feel good, you just sometimes got to stand up and say, I declare today that this is the day the Lord has made. I declare today, God, I'll never shut up, Lord, until, until I go up. Lord, I, I die to myself today, God. Oh, Lord, I praise you and thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what you've done for them of old, God, you'll do of today of new. And so, Lord, today I simply say, God, I decrease as you increase. I simply say, God, come, Holy Spirit. Fill this house, God. We rebuke and bind the old enemy. Satan, we put you under our feet where you belong. And we take back what God has given us. And we take back our churches, hallelujah, our homes, hallelujah, our children, our moms and our daddies and our households. And, Lord, we take back even America today. Lord, we love you. And I thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, Father God, that, Lord, I've got God language in me, hallelujah. And, Lord, I know, God, there's something staring. And I know the old enemy's trying to stop what God is doing, what you're doing, Lord. But today, God, in Jesus' name, show up in such a way, a profound way, that, God, even though our minds may not be alert right now, but, Father God, I pray for the presence of God just to fall so thick and so mighty that, God, you would break your pride, you would break your home, you would break your children, and, God, we'd repent of our sins and come back to the face of God. Lord, I love you. I praise you and thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. What God just spoken to me is this. Listen to me. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah was before the Lord. The Bible said that he was in the throne room of God. Imagine this. Imagine this. If God himself right now, which I believe he is, if God himself is in this church right now, y'all watch me, please. I rebuke distractions in Jesus' name. Watch me. Because if God was here right now, would you be doing what you're doing? I believe if Jesus Christ was here, Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible said that the glory of God was so thick in there, it said the train filled the temple. And Isaiah, he didn't go before the Lord and say, God, I'm sorry I used to drink. Isaiah didn't come before God and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I've done something last night I shouldn't have done. No, Isaiah said one thing, and check me out and read it, because I know the Holy Ghost is speaking right now, and he's right. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah said these words, God, forgive me, I have unclean lips. God, forgive me, because I have done things I should not have done. God, forgive me. I have talked. I have gossiped. I have talked about your people. I've talked about Israel. I've denied, denied you. Isaiah had it right. Isaiah said, I've got unclean lips. I told you the worst thing in churches today that I really believe that what, what would change our church and change this world is, Lord, forgive me. I've got unclean lips. Forgive me, God. Praise team, y'all stand. Forgive me, God. I've said things I should not have said. What we need in this old nation right now is a come to Jesus meeting. Guys, watch me very closely. I'm through. God is not about you being happy. God is about you being holy. God is not about Elkhorn being the biggest church in Camelsville. Watch this. He could care less. What God wants is a holy people to rise back up in this last hour and say, God, forgive me. I've got unclean lips. Lord, forgive me. I need more of your presence, God. Forgive me, Lord, I need more of you. And I'm telling you today, under the unction of God, that's what we need in this church. We'll never grow, and you'll never thank God. Watch me. When they got to the Jordan, they said these words. If you don't 
give God praise now, watch me, you'll never praise him for what he's going to do. Tommy, if we can't praise God now, we'll never praise God for what he's going to do. See, some of you have been missing your biggest blessing because we've not been praising God for what he's doing right now. We're always looking about the bigger and the better things. God, I'll serve you when I get this right. God, when, when you put my family back together, Lord, I promise you, I'll get back in church. God, when my children come back to their senses, God, then I'll do what you want me to do. But God's saying these words today. I'm listening to him. It's very serious. Because 42,000, 42,000, 42,000 people died because they wouldn't praise him. They wouldn't give God the praise of where they was at. So what I'm trying to tell me today and you today, you'll never praise him for what he's going to give you if you don't praise him for what he's already gave you. You know, I used to worry about building that church over there. I'm done. Because here's what I know. If we get it right in here, that shall come. Help me, Holy Ghost. If you get it right as a daddy, your house will line up. Come on, don't stop praising him now. If we get it right here, you'll get it right in the schools. If the schools get it right, our nation will get it right. Our country will get it right. I pray to God our president gets it right. He needs the Lord. He needs Jesus. So instead of complaining, why don't we just pray? Why don't we praise God for what God has given us? Y'all just look around. This is the second service. Watch this, y'all ready? First service had 156. Close to a $2,000 offering came in, first service. Watch this. This week, over 3000 came in on our online giving. It's great. And what I'm trying to tell everybody is this. Don't miss the bus. Don't miss what God is doing now. Because if we're not faithful now, hallelujah, we'll never praise him when we get over if you'll never praise God and thank God for what he's given you now, you'll, you'll never cross over. I used to fuss about my children, and now I'm sitting there going, God, I'm 42. Blake's going to be 23. Destiny's 9. going to be 21. God time flies. God time flies, guys. When I met Dana... Bobby, you was 53. You want to get to 73 now. Time flies. And I want to thank you for shooting me straight. And I am the man of God today because I have a father-in-law that invested in my life. And I want to thank Elkhorn. Life is short. So short. And I don't want to go to my deathbed looking up and saying, I wish I could have, should have. I don't want to go to my deathbed saying, oh, Elkhorn, we, had, we was on dynamite. But we were so afraid to cross over. But Father, we, we, did, we did not give God praise for where we was already at. You're blessed. You're blessed. Mark, you're blessed. Daniel, you're blessed. Youth group, you're blessed. To be where you're at right now, we're blessed. And I pray to God today, before we cross over the Jordan, that we'll learn to praise Him right where we're at. Oh, by the way, they didn't have the name of God down right. One letter separated them. Do you realize when you get to heaven, there's going to be one thing. That's going to separate you. Same name. 
If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? You're going to be separated from God forever. You know the worst thing about hell is not the fire. You know the worst thing about hell? It's not the gnashing of the teeth. You know the worst thing about hell? It's not that you're going to be separated from your loved ones forever. The worst thing about hell is that you're going to be separated from Jesus forever and forever and forever and forever. Can I beg you today, sir? Can I beg you today, ma'am? College students, you, if you don't know Jesus, you're at the Jordan. Watch me. Transitioning time. If you walk out lost the same way you came in, you said, I'm good, I'm going to remain like I am. But today, I'm begging you, I'm asking you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. I don't want none of you dying and go to hell. None of you dying and go to hell. 